you have an outside corner and an inside corner. Both of these corners are going to exert pressure, pull pressure on your wallpaper. Now as I do this, I want you to think about where is it going to put the pressure? Is it going to put the pressure here or is it going to put the pressure here? And what would you do as a result? Show them this side over here. Please bring them in and just show them this. You can see this. Why do I have this tape here? I'm going to tell you why. If you try to join this seam with the paper underneath it and move it over to here, and then you work all of this around, guess what's going to happen? You're going to come back and you're going to have an irreparable eighth of an inch gap. You'll never get it back. Trust me, I've made plenty of mistakes. Do it like this. Let's recap what I'm talking about. Don't try to do a butt joint here. You want to do a double cut here. Because when you work this corner, this, if you do a butt joint, will be an eighth of an inch gap. Even if I do the double cut now, when I work this all through, there will be an eighth of an inch gap. Even worse, on my double cut, we're going to do this last. I have learned enough from mistakes that I want to share with you. All right? So the corners are never perfect. This corner is sharp here. You can even see it in the camera. It's sharp here. It's fat here. That all makes up for 3 16 to a half an inch moving back and forth of your wallpaper, believe it or not, half an inch. So, see that? Imagine if you did your butt joint and you're moving that kind of material over. For those of you who hang, you know what I'm talking about. But for those of you who don't, just do it like I'm saying and you'll, you'll do great. Show them this corner. You can see the zig zigzag down here, right here. I'm gonna work with my best. Here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull it. See? So if I did my joint here, to make this tight, I gotta move it over here, through two sixteenths. I gotta move it over here in eighth. You know what I'm saying. Obviously, two sixteenths and an eighth is the same thing. I'm trying to emphasize the fact that even a sixteenth or two give you a wide gap. Okay, so when you're doing an outside corner with grass, any wallpaper, but particularly with grass, because the stuff is super stubborn. You want to work the outside corner first. Now, I'll let you think about this. Am I cutting this or am I going to leave this like that? Excuse me. Well, it would be nice if we didn't have to cut it. If you don't cut this, you'll be able to put your finger through it tomorrow. So let's get this cut.
these walls are really not not cool Now you can't see it in the camera, but I'm angling my blade as to cut, leaving more of this than usual. I'm twisting the blade so that I, so that it doesn't just cut in the corner. I want to leave some of this in the corner, preferably three sixteenths. Usually I say an eighth. But grass cloth is like a set of blinds. Picture a set of blinds, right? Fully extended. If you do this with them, what do they do? They zigzag, right? They don't, one doesn't go out, the other one, they zigzag. It moves in groupings of five or six veins of blind, right? Look at this. That's how, so you're not gonna get any stretch out of it. You wanna be careful that in co inside corners you cut three sixteenths of an inch and leave it under the sheet after we cut it. them and let them see. See what I'm talking about? That's what you want. Don't go less. Don't go less because when you have a crooked wall, you'll be happy that I told you. <sighs> what I love about work like this it's quitting time. Okay. Now, has anybody watching the video thought about what side they would put in there? How about if I flipped to put the factory edge in there? Wouldn't that make it easy for me? That's what we're going to do. This edge is cut. The wall's uneven. Look at my cut. It goes from an eighth to three sixteenths. I'm one, I want a factory edge in there. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get this off. Okay. All right, please step out of the way, camera, while I'm Lift this over. I got a nice amount of glue on it. Oh, very nice. Factory edge to the corner. Now look. Look at what I just did. Okay, we want to keep our hands clean. We're dealing with grass ball. Now remember the, the anomaly that comes from hanging grass. Remember the zigzag effect of the blinds, right? 
So if your wall is doing a lot of this, your grass cloth only has so much give. The longer the piece, yeah, you can make this move down here, but if it's, like if you need this whole thing to move, it's not happening. Okay. Bring them in nice and close. Okay, see that? Okay. We're gonna bring it up. Put a lot of force in. See that? We gotta get right in there. The wool really takes a dip right there. It's really annoying. So, see what happened? I pushed it in here and look what it did up there. Because it's so connected, the grass cloth, because it's, it's woven in squares. So if you move one square, it's kind of tugging on the rest of them. You gotta really finesse this stuff. Okay, Spencer, I have to push this glue. Can, can you see the bump here on your camera? Can you see that? Can you see these bumps? I'm asking the cameraman, can you see the bumps? Okay, so how do you get rid of that glue? It's gonna go onto my grass cloth. What, what am I gonna do? Well, I'll show you. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this? Well, we wanna catch the glue. Show them right in there. Push that glue out. Okay. There you go. You don't want that on your grass cloth. Right? Now, if the homeowners can look at this, they can see variations in the corner. That's not because of me. That's the corner. The corner goes a little bit in and out. And so the reflection of the light's going to be not, not consistent. But you know what? It's acceptable. You know? Now, you wouldn't see this with vinyl. Vinyl would accommodate crooked corners. Now, don't try to get fancy and think, I'm going to cut this. Spencer's wrong. You cut this, you're going to go right through it and cut the layer underneath it, and you're going to have a white gap in your corner. Don't do that. Okay. Now, wow. Oh, we got, we got to move this out. Our corner is not being nice to us. This is a real pain. Now look, our corner looks perfect, doesn't it? But look at all the torque. Look at the torque we got. So, you want to be careful now. You don't want to flatten it out and wrinkle it. So far, so good. But this has to come out. If we get this out, we look great. If we don't, we look like idiots. Well, here's how you gotta do it. A little up, a little down, a little up, a little down, a little back. A little up, down, up. Come on. Wow. Looks like we're gonna do okay. Okay. 
Okay, Spencer. Almost there. Now we got a little gap here. See that gap? Wasn't there a minute ago. We're gonna get it though. See how a grass cloth moves in sections of like eight to 10 inches? I move it here, it wrinkles up there. Come on now. Now here's another trick to get rid of wrinkles. Lift it up, put some glue underneath it. Miracle worker. of one okay now take a look we got two casualties one here one there because we have torque it's not straight boom This is not easy. Not easy. The best part of a grass cloth job is the end of the day. They're visible. Ultimately, it just needs to be pulled in some direction. You got to figure out which. Now, after getting our wrinkles out,
my side is not coming together, so I lifted it up and I put more glue under it. So, as I fit this corner in, I'm gonna work to the left of it out, so I'm not dealing with that after I install the corner. corner is done the wrinkles around it took a long time but that's how you do a corner outside and inside together don't expect to keep them intact so now we'll just do our double cut and show you why you have to do it like this see if I work that all out and I had my seam set up over here it would be separated already now I can do the seam because this is all in place There's a young paper hanger from England. His name is Ben Daniels. I saw his work on Facebook. I highly recommend his work for anybody who's looking for a diligent, young, vibrant paper hanger to hang their paper. Good work, quality stuff. Ben Daniels.
when I saw his work, I was pleasantly surprised that he was new at it. Maybe he's just being humble. Take your time with this. <clears throat> Don't rush it. Whenever we rush in wallpaper, we blow it. You can rush when you're cleaning your table, that's about it. This part gets hard. I suggest always get a new blade when you when you're doing the bottom. I don't I don't always recommend going from bottom to top, but sometimes I do it. Meaning when I start top to bottom, do I change direction? Be careful if you do. Super careful. Now you can see why we use the blue tape. We want to keep the glue off of the material. Now we're going to pull our. You see now, don't forget the point of why this video is being made. Do this last, this seam, and don't do a butt seam. That's the whole point of this video. Do a double cut when you're going from flat wall into a corner. It'll stress it, cost you an hour or more trying to get that seam back together. Now, if I've done well, this should all match up. Let's take this so they can see our seam, right? Let's be fair to them at home. You see, when you do this last, this joint has relaxed already. The paper is finished pulling. Now, did we spend a lot of time on it? Yes. Rush it and you'll be looking at a bad seam for the next six years during the time you have this wallpaper. Take your time and you can enjoy this for the rest of the time that this paper is up. That's done. Can you show them the seam up and down? You can show them the whole thing. This seam, nice and slow. This seam, this corner, and the inside seam. 
If you like the video, please click on like, subscribe to our channel, and let us know how you do your inside seams and outside seams. What you're looking at is not wetness. That's your seam. That's your grass cloth seam. We cut the inside. And there you have it.